If I could have a cure to diabetes, I think the thing I'd be most excited about is that I could just like go over to my friend's house and not worry about trying to figure out what they were giving me to eat or um, like calling my parents to try to figure out what to give myself for a dose. All of us, you come home from work, you walk in the kitchen, you pop something in your mouth, you think nothing of it. Sarah can't do that. Sarah has to figure out whether what she's eating requires insulin, how much. It's a 24 hour a day job, seven days a week. You never get a day off. I would give anything for a day off just to not have to think about it. What have I eaten? What's my blood sugar? If I exercise too much, how much insulin should I take? Is my insulin pump running out of insulin? How's the battery in the blood tester? How's the battery in the pump? Insulin's no cure, it's just life support. We need new treatments. We need stem cells to create something much more natural. And it is our goal with the CIRM Diabetes Disease Team to deliver the cells that normally produce insulin back to patients who have lost that cell type. I love baseball, always have. In a little league game, I was the batter and a young friend of mine hit me in the face with a pitch and they took me to the hospital and the next morning the doctor called and both my parents started crying horribly and I said, what's wrong? And they said, well, it turns out you have something called sugar diabetes. So it was the end of the summer before school started in fifth grade. I was at my friend's birthday party. It was apparent that she was so much thinner after the summer than the rest of the kids. I was drinking like way more water than anyone else at the party. And so that's when it was diagnosed. It's diabetes, it's, um, it's type one diabetes. Diabetes is the disease that um, clinically presents as high blood sugar. In type one diabetes, uh, the patient's immune system has killed off the cells that normally produce insulin. So in a person without diabetes, when they eat a meal and it starts to get digested, the blood sugar begins to elevate. The pancreas senses that elevating blood sugar and releases insulin on demand to cause that blood sugar to be utilized by the cells of the body. So in a person with diabetes who has insufficient insulin, blood sugar is going to remain elevated high blood sugar over time, um, it affects a number of organs, especially the kidneys and the eyes and the vascular system. I've had a vitrectomy in my right eye. I've had six toes amputated so far. I've had a kidney transplant because I got kidney disease. The pancreas doesn't produce the insulin, so they have to inject it on their own. And what they're doing is trying to estimate or even guess the right amount of insulin for the food that they've just eaten. Every time I eat a meal or a snack, I have to like sit down and think, what do I want to eat? So the apple is 17 plus six grams for the peanut butter. And I have to really be sure that I'm right because if I don't end up eating everything that I've dosed myself for, I'll have a low blood sugar, which is bad. So what happens when blood sugar gets too low is that patients can slip into coma or even die. Patients with diabetes are constantly trying to walk a tightrope along high blood sugar and low blood sugar. And they have to do this for the, the course of their entire life. Viacite's approach is to perform cell therapy for diabetes. The source of the cells that we'll deliver come from embryonic stem cells. We use a series of chemicals to change these stem cells and ultimately the, the cells transform into cell types of the pancreas. These cells of the pancreas are then delivered to patients inside of a capsule. And the capsule is extremely important because it will protect the cells from destruction by the patient's immune system. It's our hope that it will essentially replace the pancreas and, and release the insulin on demand just as the normal pancreas would do. I've been here for nine years and in the early days, we didn't have very much, but now to see this program evolve and blossom to the point where it really represents a clinical reality for helping patients has been very motivating and very satisfying. Lorraine and I, we've been together 27 years and she's saved my life several times when I've had low blood sugars and she goes away on trips. She was in New York yesterday and called me two or three times and said, what's your blood sugar? When we go across the Bay Bridge to Oakland to visit Rosemary's father just for dinner, we take supplies with us in case the bridge falls down so that we can be over there for some number of days. Everything Sarah does, she does with this burden. Oh. And so um, to the extent she's a happy, healthy, you know, fun-loving kid, she's working a little bit harder than everybody else to get there. JDRF runs a program called Children's Congress. Children with type 1 diabetes go to Washington, D.C. to lobby Congress for funding for diabetes research. And I was selected as one of the California delegates. And I think that the members of Congress were really like interested to see that it affects like real people. And I think it really touched them. 
obviously I would love there to be a cure because I mean it would be great to go back to life the way it was before I had diabetes and before I had all these responsibilities and I think stem cell research is a good idea because it's it's a new approach and I think we need as many approaches as we can get because it's a hard thing to find a cure for.